Hey, hey, Haley, welcome to Entrepreneur School. Yay, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I love having guest interviews on the show, especially when we're talking about one, motherhood and running a business because you have three very young children. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. like transitioning into school and stuff right now, which is crazy. Yes. Yeah, it's um it's been it's been something. It's been good. My oldest is very outgoing, so he's been thriving in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. But you know, then I also have two younger in daycare. So it's been um kind of chaotic in the mornings. Like now people are going to different different places, um, like different schools. So figuring all that out has been uh, you know, it's been it's been a lot. But now we're a couple months in. We are getting the routines under our belt, and I think I think we're settling in. But you know, we're also getting into six season, so any anything's possible at this point. <laughs> oh man, just so much. Just like what's gonna happen tomorrow, and then you make a plan, and then something just goes totally sideways. <laughs> Oh, I know. It's like every plan I make has to have a caveat or a plan B because I'm like, I don't know who's going to get sick when. And like, you know, we went to a movie this weekend and my husband was sick. So I was like, okay, well, you're staying home. And, um, but, but it was fun. I feel like my kids are starting to get a little bit older. I mean, older, they're almost six, three and seven months. So very young, but like we can go out and do some more fun things now. Like I took my two oldest to a movie and it was like, it was so great to be able to do something that was also relaxing for me because, you know, I find a lot of motherhood very exhausting, but I love going and seeing a movie, but with young kids, it's just not really something that we get to do mm -hmm. very much. So being able to do something like that with them and something that I really enjoy as well, it was just, it was, it was a really great time. So I'm excited to kind of come into this phase of motherhood here and there a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, it is a game changer when they start like becoming more independent and stuff, but you just shift into different levels of like mom sherpa -ness. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. I, I live at our community rec center, literally have to go there four days a week for gymnastics or hockey practice at this point. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, this is my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When they can start like doing some things on their own <laughs> while you just like get a moment to yourself. It's like, ah, like, okay, I can, I can breathe now. And my, my seven month old, he is just the happiest little guy, which is Aww. great because I've haven't historically had super happy babies, but he is very happy. He's so easy to take around everywhere. He'll like fall asleep wherever. So he's, I guess that stereotypical third child, just go with the flow, which has been really, really like wonderful addition to our family. I just love him so much. He's like just the, the best baby. So that's been, that's been wonderful. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Cause I honestly can't imagine running a business and like your, like you're into your second business, kind of yep. getting it yes. off the ground with such a young baby. So tell us a little bit about like what you do and how this is like unfolding for you. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's a great question. So, um, I have been in the online space since 2016. I actually started with a home improvement blog and my husband and I had just bought our first house. It needed a lot of fixing up. And so I, um, you know, I have a degree in marketing, so I've been very much in the like marketing space for a long time. And I've always just loved the digital aspect of it. I guess, I don't know. I kind of grew up in like boom of the internet and when it was big to have a MySpace profile and all all of those kinds of things. So um, I've just loved digital marketing for as long as I guess the internet was became a thing, if you will. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so I, I uh, got a degree in marketing. I um, started my first blog in 2016 and then uh, kind of started getting more and more into the online space. Um, started working another, with another creator in 20. 19, like got more experience with like really marketing strategies, funnel strategies, all that good stuff. Um, and in that time I discovered story brand. So have you, are you familiar with story brand? Yes. Yeah. Um, I am so obsessed with the story brand framework. So story brand is a company by Donald Miller. I am a story brand certified guide, which just means that I, um, am able to implement this framework with the, with clients and, you know, everybody would, that I work with. Mm -hmm. Um, so wanting, so becoming a guide is something that I've been wanting to do for years. And just finally the stars aligned last, uh, a little over a year ago, August, 2022, what year is it? 2023, <laughs> August, 2022. Um, so 
finally it was like, okay, I think I have the bandwidth to do this now. Um, but I was also pretty newly pregnant at that time. So, uh, I was a little bit like, is this the best time to do this? Like, what am I doing? I have two kids. I'm pregnant with my third. Um, I decided to move forward and get certified in December of last year. So I was like starting to get, I was doing at the end of February. So it oh was, my um, How long of- the certification. Well, the, um, it's just like a three day or it's like a, I think it was like a four day online, uh, certification. So it wasn't too bad on that regard, but I had not technically launched my services yet. I was still in the, um, I was still getting things up and running. I had a full-time position at the time as well. And so I was kind of wanting to do that on the side, but then launching my own business in June, 2023. um, So I was really balancing a lot of things when I decided to get certified, but I just, I wanted to do it so bad. I had been waiting like probably three or four years for the time to be right to do it. So the stars aligned. I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get certified. So I got certified in December. It was great. I was so excited. I was so jazzed about, um, Uh, you know, everything that I learned to start implementing for clients. Um, And then in January, pregnancy brain hit me full force. I could not like hardly put two sentences together. I was exhausted and I like wanted so bad to be able to work on my business, but I was so tired. And um, I finally came up with like the name of my business and like set up a WordPress site. And that was, that was it for me. So, um, I really, my brain went offline from like January until May, probably (laughs) I had the baby. I had him. He's wonderful. My little Benny boy. Um, I got kind of through those first few months postpartum and then in May, so about three months postpartum, I also had some just really kind of tragic family stuff that happened and whatnot. So it was just a lot to go through in the spring. Mm. Um, and then in May I was like, okay. I'm ready. My brain is back online. Let's go. So I started working on like, I, I, I started putting some stuff together to launch my business. And then one day in June, I was like, I'm just going to start following a bunch of people that I know on my new Instagram account. And I didn't really realize that that was going to be the launch of my business. And, um, you know, a bunch of people reached out. They were like, oh, this is so cool. I didn't know that you were going to be, you know, branching out and starting your own marketing services. And I was like, yeah. So that was kind of my messy launch. I was anticipating to for that to be the launch of my business. But then a few people were like, oh, hey, like I would love for you to help with my marketing messaging. And I started booking clients and here we are. Um, so it was Yes, what I'd like to call a messy launch because mm-hmm. um, I did not have all my systems in place when it happened, and um, <laughs> but we like I don't know we just we we did it and it was great and I kept adding things on and making revisions as I went and balancing that with getting then my you know my littlest into daycare and um, you know balancing motherhood. It's been wild, but I guess not maybe quite as wild as I thought it would be. I don't know. My husband is wonderful too. I always have to give him so much credit and so many kudos because he's like my person and my support person and he's a wonderful partner to have. So that's awesome. Okay. Let's go back and unpack this for a second. You launched messy. So you had like, you're like, I'm going to do this. And you're, yeah, I love the phrase. uh, My brain went offline. So (laughs) way to like, listen to what you need right in the time in the season that you were in at that point. And then you were like, okay, so, you know, tell me what, like, like take me back because it's been a Mm -hmm. minute since I launched a business. (laughs) Like when you're thinking about starting, what are all the things? And especially if you are already deep in the online space, there's so much influence out there around like what you quote should do in order to launch. So yes. tell me like what's going on in your mind as you're thinking about how what how I'm supposed to and what I'm supposed to do here. Yeah. So I have I'm kind of like a serial entrepreneur if you will. Like I will get a really fun business idea and then just like come up with all the branding for it and then like kill it. <laughs> don't end up wanting to do it. So like Uh I have almost launched a sticker shop, um, a caramel apple business, um, like a bunch of really random things, but mostly I just love creating the marketing and branding for businesses. And then the rest, I'm kind of like, meh, but I knew that this one is one that I was going to have to see through. So, um, 
to start, I knew that I needed to get everything like legal squared away. So my first step was filing for an LLC for it. So I needed to first come up with the name of my business and the name of my LLC. That is what took me the longest because I am terrible when it comes to naming things. So I spent, that was like my whole pregnancy was just trying to come up with a name for my business. So I settled on copy click studio, which I love. I'm so happy with the name that I chose. Um, so I had to file for an LLC. Once I got that, I had to get an EIN number so that I could, you know, do taxes and stuff through it. And then I needed to find an accountant. So those were kind of all the foundations for the business, as mm -hmm. well as creating a website and then very much prioritize putting an email list together because I knew that was going to be where, <laughs> where my business like existed. So I had to do, those were very high on my list as well as, um, what was the other? Oh, getting like a billing software set up so that I could get my people like have a contract signed, have them pay all in one cohesive, easy step. So, um, and then Instagram, because I like hanging out on Instagram the most, I wanted that to be where I focused my social presence because I enjoy hanging out there and I'm already there a lot. So, um, yeah, those were like, those were really Thanks. the foundations of, and yeah, like you say, you didn't do like a big, super splashy ta-da. You were just like, hey, I'm here. And then you started like having one-on-one -on -one conversations with people. Yeah. And, you know, I had tried launching services in the past. The past was probably like 2018 was the last time that I did. And I just was not as well connected as I am now. And so having those connections now and having actual people to reach out to and connect with and launch to was a complete game changer. So, you know, especially when it comes to visibility, like that is mm -hmm. such a core part of launching a business is putting yourself out there and making those connections because without that, it's really hard to, uh, you know, like get your foot in the door anywhere when people don't know you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a bit about what you do at copy click studio, as far as like turning marketing messaging into something that people resonate with because this is a really like challenging skill for a lot of people is they just like I just don't know what to say I don't know how to talk about what I do I don't know how to do it in a way that actually connects makes people want to buy from me yes so this is like my heart's passion which is kind of hilarious that it's like business marketing <laughs> but, um, <laughs> right I know um so I, like I said, I started in the online space back in 2018. I tried selling something multiple times, but I always just felt like everything that I touched would not sell. Like, even though I love marketing now, I hated marketing for the longest time. Mm. I felt so uncomfortable selling. And I think that's something that resonates with a lot of people. Um, they just feel uncomfortable putting themselves out there, asking for money, all of those good things that are actually, you know, the core of your business and why we're in business, which is to make money. Um, so I, you know, really had to work on those selling skills for myself. And that's something that I really found valuable with the story brand framework, because when you're using story-based marketing, it doesn't feel nearly as pushy because the whole premise of it is that you're connecting with your customer first, um, and like making those connections, getting on the same page, really kind of diving into the customer's problem and the you know success that they really want to see, and then positioning your product as the solution to that problem. Um, so you know a little, I guess a little bit about my business and what I do. Um, I help primarily online businesses really. Uh, streamline their marketing messaging so that when they go to, you know, do social media posts or create a sales page or anything like that, they can create marketing that looks good, feels good and makes sales. That's my, my little tagline. Um, because all of those parts are really important to getting your messaging across and, um, you know, creating marketing that people actually want to read and not just skim over. Cause you know, all of us, if there's a sales page where the scroll is so tiny, you can barely see it and you're scrolling for like five minutes to get through the sales page, people probably aren't reading that. We are all, I think the statistic is like 78% of people skim sales pages. So what I do is I help you trim down all of that to create a mark, like a whole 
messaging framework that's story-based. So putting your customer first, making your customer the hero of the story, um, you know, positioning your product as all about them and how it transforms your customer's life over like, let me talk about myself and what I can do for you and how I can help you. Like the mm -hmm. marketing messaging that I implement is all customer focused. So here's how this product will help you. Here's the problem that you're experiencing. Here's the transformation that you can experience um, you know, by using my product. And then here's the success that you can see. So, uh, usually when I meet with clients, we have like a half day strategy session where we dive into, um, the seven parts of a story in relation to their brand. So we can figure out how to kind of weave these elements into a marketing messaging that really resonates with their customers. Right. And then it's different applications like social media versus email. Like how do you use this? It kind of becomes your guide, right? Exactly. Yeah. So it's like a marketing playbook that we put together. Wow. And then I create like a one page script that has all of these pieces of the marketing framework in it. And then they can see like, okay, it's really great because then they're like, then you can take that script and say, okay, I want to write a social media post about um, the problem that my customer is facing. Okay. I want to write a social media post or write an email about the um, like success that they're going to see or the aspirational identity that they're going to feel. So, uh, you know, I love it because it's like this whole guide for you to use in all different parts of your marketing and also a bunch of ideas for parts of your marketing messaging that you can talk about in all of your, you know, marketing materials about your product and your brand. Yeah. So definitely like a, an important piece of that is having a really solid awareness of your ideal client and who they are, where they are, what they're experiencing. And this is something that I find people really struggle with, especially when they're like newer into business and you haven't like worked with too many people yet. And you're having a hard time, like narrowing down what the niche is. So what advice do you have around that, especially for people who are maybe just getting started? Yes. Oh my gosh. That's a great question. Or, so or I, I know, sorry to interrupt your, no. your flow there. Just to like caveat, like, so don't stop listening if you aren't just getting started, but sometimes you launch new things as you're growing. So you have a new product, a new service that yes. still requires going through this process again. Yes. Yes, for sure. So I like to think of customers as being on a spectrum. So there are customers that um, are very ready to buy your product. And there's customers that are several steps behind them that aren't quite ready to buy your product, but they might be ready in three months, six months, a year, et cetera. So in your marketing material, you, at least what I believe is it's, it's easiest and most helpful to talk to those people who are ready to buy your product, or maybe at that, like, like 70 to eight, like, 70 to 100% ready to buy your product. They might just need a little bit more convincing. But when you're using messaging that talks to those people that are very ready to buy your product, you're still including those people that are several steps behind them because they know that that's where they're going to want to get to eventually anyway as well, if that makes sense. So they're going to be like, they're going to get there eventually and they can see like, oh yeah, I do see that I'm going to need this eventually. Maybe I don't need it quite yet, but I want to bookmark this for later because uh, that's that's what I'm going to need when I'm ready. And then they're going to want to stay in your space. So I find with that mentality, it really helps keep, um, keep your marketing messaging focused while also feeling comfortable <laughs> that you're still speaking to those people that are a few steps behind. That is a really interesting perspective. Instead of thinking that you have to actually like, because a lot of, a lot of people teach the like, customer journey framework, going from unaware to most aware, basically, yep. and that you have to like have things that address people at all the, all the places. And I'm literally going through an exercise right now trying to figure out, well, what are they really scared of way back here? And how do I like take them along with yeah. me? And you're saying you kind of don't have to because they, they, as long as you know their aspirations and they know their aspirations and you can say, this is how we get those aspirations to like come true, then they're going to connect the rest of the dots pretty much themselves. Yes, absolutely. And it really helps, like it helps you focus in as a, as an entrepreneur as well, because you don't feel like you have to talk to so many people. You're mm -hmm. really just talking to that core 
you know, that buyer who's like right about there. And like you mentioned, all of those people have the same endpoint that they want to go to that like same aspirational identity. They're all having the same problem. They might just be feeling that problem on different levels, you know, like some, like when it comes to visibility, some people might be in those beginning stages and they know they're going to need to focus on visibility in the next three, three to six months, but it's not a core focus quite yet. Like me, when I was just launching my business, like I know that I need to focus on visibility at some point, but like, I still have to get my LLC created and I need to get my software set up and like all of that stuff, you know? Um, Mm. but I'll get there eventually. So it really helps everybody, um, you know, feel like, resonate with what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And it feels a little like less pressure too, as for you yeah. as a leader, if you're like narrowing the scope to yes. be more specific, because we know that the more specific you can be with your copy, with your messaging, the more it's going to connect with people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, once I kind of figured that out, it really it helps my clients as well, because like you said, it takes less pressure off. Um, and you know, you're really focusing on the end, end result in the end result that you're going to provide them versus focusing so much on like all of these different pain points, you know, with, with story brand, we teach and what I work on with my clients is, focusing on one cohesive problem solution instead of throwing so many problems and so many solutions at your customer. Because, you know, as CEO of StoryBrand, Donald Miller says, if you confuse, you lose. So if you're putting too much out there in your marketing material, you're going to lose your customers. So really um, for sales pages, emails, like any piece of marketing collateral that I'm working on, I try and keep it as streamlined and focused as possible without branching off on like, so you're feeling this, like, let's talk about that. Now I know that you're also feeling this and let's talk about that. And then there's this other thing that you've probably experienced and like that really stinks. And so, you know, it's just like, it becomes so chaotic. And when people think, that their marketing material is feeling really chaotic and all over the place. It's because it is, and they're probably talking about too many things at once. So, um, mm. yeah, it's, and it's hard because, you know, so many entrepreneurs are passionate about so many things and, uh, your, like any course program, whatever probably does help with a lot of different pain points. But if you throw all those pain points at your customer, they're going to get really overwhelmed and not be as likely to convert. So keeping it streamlined, I've seen over and over again, keeping it streamlined and keeping it focused really helps your customers pay attention and uh, actually listen and want to buy what you have to sell them. So it's kind of like shining all the lights on one main pain and solution to yes. just like really get them to understand like this is what I need. And then that whole concept of like the sell them what they want, give them what they need. All of the rest can come in, in the delivery of whatever you're actually offering. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And that's where it comes to, again, where you're talking about the like customer spectrum earlier, focusing on that one aspirational identity. Like this is the core thing that you want. And this is like the biggest desire that you have. Let's focus on getting you there. All the other pieces are going to fall into place, you know, and that's kind of where your framework comes in of like, here's the steps that you need to see. And part of the story brand framework is having a three-step plan to help them see success. So um, Hmm. talking about, about what that, you know, easy to follow plan is because when someone has a, uh, problem. They just want like an easy, give me a plan. Help me, help me understand what I need to do. And it's like, step one, you join my course. Step two. I mean, it would be not exactly this, but like step (laughs) one, join the course. Step two, implement the strategies. Step three, become the aspirational identity that we're talking about. And you want to, you want to become. And so they're like, Oh, that's, that's what I have to do. Okay. Like I want to buy this course. And okay. Can you workshop this with me for the sake of having an example? Because I think that a lot of the time we and myself included, so I'm going to give you my own like client's aspirational identity. I think it's sometimes very broad, right? For an entrepreneur, their aspirational identity is to like get clients and run a successful business. Mm -hmm. So how do you, where do you go from there? How do you narrow that down, get more specific or do you need to? Well, you can. So what so i would then ask you why do they want to get more clients i mean they want a successful business but if we can if i can ask you why like what's what's another reasoning why behind that 
Well, for the the flexibility and freedom that comes with being an entrepreneur, especially when you're a parent, right? Because you got to yeah. go to hockey practice at four. <laughs> yes, for sure. So to piggyback off of that, one question I really like asking is when your customer is laying in bed at night and they can't sleep, what is like, what are they thinking about? Like what is keeping them up at night in relation to getting clients and running a successful business in relation to that. Well, I feel like it's like, it's the outcome. It's the money. Like I'm, I need to make money for my business, for my family. Yeah. So thinking through that then, so like, are you thinking of this in terms of like narrowing down your core messaging? In right. Because I feel like it's so vanilla to be like, you want to grow a business. This is the way to grow a business. Like, obviously there's a million ways. It could be like, well, you need to get better at marketing messaging. You need better copy. Yes. You need to have a website. You need visibility. You need like, you need a financial plan. Like it could be any yep. number of things. So what would you say it is then about your program that differentiates it from, from other programs? Or like, what's the core thing that you teach in your program that um, helps them see success? Hmm. Um, the skill set to put themselves out there, get visible, become more confident and clear. Okay. So then with that, like the problem there then might be, would you say it's like maybe in their confidence or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Like, cause even as you were saying earlier, right. When we start a business, we're like, Oh, we just, we don't really know how to put ourselves out there. We feel nervous about like, um, being too salesy. It's uncomfortable mm -hmm. to ask people to give us money for things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I would do with that then is to add like some spice to your marketing and not feel so like vanilla and all of that. I like thinking of a specific moment that your customer is experiencing. Mm -hmm. So like if they are lacking the confidence and putting themselves out there saying something like, um, do your palms feel sweaty when you think of, um, like pitching yourself to, to your like dream collaboration or something like that. Mm. They're like, Ooh, yes. So with story brand, this is the idea of opening a story loop. So when we hear the start of a story, we feel like we need to finish it. So what's a story that you can tell that resonates with them that they have experienced or can see themselves experiencing that your uh, course helps them, helps them overcome. Mm. So I would start the story with something very visual, something that they can resonate with. So yeah, like, do your palms feel sweaty? Do you um, like all of those things that you would think about in lacking confidence when it comes to when it comes to collaborating. Um, and that's something that's going to hook their attention. So um, narrowing it down more. So you said the aspirational identity can be very broad. They want to get, get clients and run a successful business so that they can have flexibility and freedom. Um, so I, when I work with clients um, in that like half day strategy session, we spend a long time really like, drilling down deep into what the core problem is because yeah everybody wants to be successful everybody wants to get clients but like what's keeping them up at night what does your customer deserve so um you said they need they need to make money but like in term even like beyond that like they need their name to get out there um they need like the assets to deliver to like you know a, probably a media package or something like that um they probably like what are they feeling are they probably feeling overwhelmed by all of this nervous about putting um like maybe being putting themselves out there and getting rejected i'm sure fear of rejection is a huge thing that um like your your students would experience um so then once we can like get all of those and really drill down like deeper and deeper, then that makes your marketing messaging feel a lot more pointed um, to like, mm -hmm. so that we can like talk about then the success. I see that. Cause you could then be, you're, you're more like exposing a deeper cause mm -hmm. of a problem that they may not be aware of. And when you point that out, they're like, Oh, that's yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, and I when need, you, I need that now. Yes. Yes. And then 
you know, I'm, I'm like what they call an empath. So I'm very much, uh, like feel other people's feelings. So I'm like, let's feel all of the things and let's talk about whatever your students are feeling and then put all of that in your marketing material. Because, yeah. you know, when, when you can say, Hey, I know what it's like to feel scared to pitch or whatever it is. They're like, Oh my gosh, she gets me. Oh <laughs> and yeah. People I've want that, that shared connection. Like, that whole, like, so you got up the courage to take yourself to the networking event, but now you have to go find a seat and who are you going to talk to? And what are you even going to say when mm-hmm. somebody asks you what you do? Mm-hmm. Like how? That is like, I, as like outgoing as I seem, networking events are the bane of my existence. Like I, like hands shaking, like sitting in the car, wondering if I should even go in or not. I don't, Right. Right. You're like, um, what, how late is too late to be casually late? (laughs) Right. Yes. And then I walk in and I'm like sweating and I'm like, can people see that I'm sweating? And like, I am, what's my name and where do I live? I don't know. The bar and (laughs) right. Exactly. Yeah. That's me. So uh, Uh, yes, probably need your course over here. Watch out everybody. This is coming on my sales page soon. (laughs) Okay. That was super helpful. I think for anybody to ask like all those questions that you were just asking me, those are the questions that people need to be able to answer for their, to be able to unlock their own marketing messaging and get more clear about their ideal client's experience, because we have to put everything into that perspective. Yes. I think that is the main shift that I feel like we take away from this conversation is instead of, Hey, I can do this and I can do that. And it's going to help you. It's like, would you like this? This is what you're experiencing. Like, and you, as a result of just even saying that to them, they become, they feel that seen, heard, understood. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. When you can connect with your customer on that level versus just putting information out at them, like, Hey, like you need clients. It's like, yeah, I do need clients, but like everybody is saying that I need clients. But when you can really like talk about an experience that they've had, that's when they're going to start listening. So, you know, when putting that into practice, that is, you know, looking at the headlines on your sales page, are those headlines really grabbing their attention with those feelings that they're feeling with the experiencing the the experiences that they've had um, on your social media leading with um, those things that are going to help them connect to you as a person and not just a deliverable that you are putting out there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. This is so good. Okay. Haley, is there any like final words of advice that we didn't get to that you want to make sure that people hear before we sign? You know, I think when in doubt, keep your marketing concise. I think at the end of the day, people, all of us entrepreneurs tend to ramble. I mean, you started your business for a reason. You're so passionate about the thing that it is that you want to share, but you know, Putting your passion out there can feel like a fire hose to your customer sometimes. So when in doubt, dial it back, like keep it simple, keep it streamlined, use lots of um, like white space and all good stuff to try and not fire hose your customer with marketing material. So, you know, keep it short, keep it uh, I feel like that should be like a sign off. Keep it short. Keep it snappy. <laughs> yeah, no, I was um, writing down. This is the quote that goes with right, the Right, right. But keep it clear and concise instead of, um, you know, too flowery or too worrying about being too catchy. I am rarely like really catchy in marketing. I'm very clear and concise because people have an easier time understanding that versus trying to figure out what you are um getting across by being catchy. So when in doubt, keep it clear and concise and, uh, you know, try not to be too flowery because that's actually going to lose people. Totally. So good. Okay. Amazing. Please let us know where we can find you. And I believe that you have um, a lovely gift that we'll put in the show note links as well. Yes. So I love to hang out on Instagram. I am at copyclick.co. So please come find me, send me a message. Um, And then yes, I also have a wonderful download, uh, five marketing mistakes that might be ruining your sales. So you can grab that at copyclick.co. 
co forward slash podcasts and uh, grab it from there, free download. And then I send an email every Tuesday with great marketing tips that you can implement right away. So um, yes, come hang out with me. I, I'm nice and I have fun. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for being here, Haley. Yeah, thank you, Kelly.